Hi, this is Krusty Bob, and today we're going to deal with a rusty bayonet. I don't know if you can see much of that. This is a World War II bayonet for the M1 Garand. It's made by the Powell Company. It actually says so right there, and when we're done with it, you'll be able to read that. So the rust extends on down into the, uh, the handle here, the grip. But really, it's in pretty good shape. These are in nice condition. And what we're going to do to clean this thing up is to use my two favorite tools for this. A Scotch-Brite nylon pad and a brass brush. Now some of you may be going at this very moment, well, Krusty Bob, you're not going to take that implement of destruction to our beautiful little bayonet here. I guarantee you, the only thing that this is going to touch is that active brown rust. I've done this on, I don't know, it may be a hundred knives and bayonets over the years. It takes off the brown active rust, leaves whatever below that, and there's always something, and makes it look really nice. And again, because it's the brown active rust, we are arresting the rust. So, the little brass brush, I have a tool, and this is a Dremel type tool. I got this one from um, Harbor Freight. And this is actually an older model. It has, uh, I think, three speeds. I always use the lowest speed. Ah, I almost forgot the, the juice that makes this whole thing go. It is the good old WD-40. And that's what uh, goes on to here. And I'll spray the whole thing down before I go over it with the uh, Scotch-Brite pad or the uh, nylon brushes. Oh, the other essential, lots of rags. Actually, I prefer paper towels, but I think we're short on those in the household. So I'm going to put on some gloves. <laughs> While working in my lab late one night. So let's find an outlet for the, um, the wannabe Dremel pool. Okay. Let's see, is that going to work? Not too bad. I usually use this thing out in the garage. I'm in my little photo studio right now. That's why I've got some temporary uh, barriers around to uh, uh, absorb the inevitable bits of WD-40 that are flung off into the into space as the brush whirls on it. First thing I want to do is take off the the grips, and that involves just one screw. Put that aside. Okay, so that's what we're looking at. This is the spring mechanism. There's a spring in there. And I'm not really sure how to get it out in order to get the rust out of that area. I may just leave it like that till I get to the end and then take a bit of time to try to figure it out because I hate to take that little spring out of there because once a spring is sprung they often go off flying through the air apparently chasing, chasing the WD-40. So let's spray this down a bit. Okay. Let's go over the blade first with a Scotch-Brite. Soak that up a bit too. I liken this process to wet sanding. I used to own and work on old boats and you put down a coat of varnish and then what do you do? It looks nice. You sand between it. You wet sand. And that's basically what we're doing in this process. And if you can see that brown on there, but there's a lot of it. Let's just take the So just a pass with the uh, Scotch-Brite yielded that much gunk. I do it near the edges and the tip. I really make an effort to keep it sort of angled like that so I'm not pushing down on the sharp edge of the blade, such as it is on an old rusty knife. Of course, the real killer is usually the tip. 
That one feels like it's a little rounded. By the way, I have a pile of these things because uh, you will wear them out. Let's see what happens with the uh, the rotary tool here. I'll bite my tongue to keep them calling it a Dremel since that is a trademark phrase of the Dremel people. I like this big cup type brush for this sort of thing. Uh, you probably can't see it from there, but uh, the, uh, the written information, the manufacturer's name and what have you, just started to show through. We've pretty much gotten most of the brown off. I don't know if you can see in this lighting the difference between here and here, or here and here. I think we started these were all the same color of brown. This tool is to get into the tight places specifically around the guards, typically. A little more WD-40 on there. I think I'd darn near use a half a can of this stuff if I'm doing something like a long bayonet. I used this process on a military helmet once. I didn't do any video of it, but I think I can find the photo that showed you the before and after that. It was pretty incredible. It was brown. I used this exact same process to remove the brown and it turned out to have its original green underneath. One thing you need to do with these tools is to let them rest. Let them cool off, basically. Okay. There's that piece. Let's see if we can get the spring out of there without springing it. So, I'm going to spray some WD-40 on this mechanism, let that sit for a while while I go take a break and while the, uh, the Dremel-like tool takes a break. I think it's some clean gloves. Alright, back from my break. And I brought along something else to use, a little brass brush. This is very handy, especially for small pieces like this. It's also good for getting into these areas here. Oh, I have this one too. I think this is for cleaning shotguns. I have these in different sizes and they're actually pretty good for getting into these holes. So, one more WD-40 here. Let's give this a quick run over with the Dremel-like tool. So let's set that aside. We've also got the little spring here. Wipe this by hand because if I did this with the Dremel tool, I could see I just I loosened my grip for just a nanosecond, and the spinning uh, brush would send that thing flying off. <laughs> okay. 
that sit over there. Another little squirt of Kickapoo Joy Juice. Look that one up. Google that. I was going to look it up, but I lost my Google. Let's wipe this down and see where we're going. Looking pretty good overall. I've had very good luck with this procedure. I've done it on blades dating back to pre-Civil War. That's looking pretty good. The brown rust is pretty thick on this. Let's take a clean pad. Wipe it down, see what comes up yet. That's a lot of brown rust on there yet, huh? I think we can take one of the cupped brushes and go over that again. And Just brushing these very lightly with the brass brush. There's a mark on the bottom side of the grips. Now this side is uh, a lot of rust on it. This mark is a lot more readable. That's the screw. Oh no. My, my finger's exposed. I'll die from WD 40 exposure. But I won't rust. I'm going to take this piece outside where my air compressor is. I'm going to squirt it down with window cleaner and wipe it down a couple of times. I want to get all the WD-40 residue off of here. So here it is. I uh, Again, I sprayed this with uh, window cleaner and then Took the uh, air compressor at full speed and blasted everything. I wanted to get all of uh, the traces of the uh, WD-40 off of here. And the, I find that the window cleaner works really well for that. And then the air compressor just dries it all up nicely. This had thick active rust, and even after all I did, there's still traces of it remaining. You can see it under certain lighting conditions, that kind of orange and red tint to it. I may go over it again, but it's actually pretty good like this. Uh, certainly that blade was so rusty you could not even read the maker's marks. And now those come out pretty good.